This American carnage stops right here and stops right now. The inauguration of Donald Trump as President of the United States has unleashed a wave of anger across the country. Faced with the frightening prospect of an authoritarian right-wing government, many people have chosen to take their opposition to the streets. Once the election results came in and Trump got elected, we really kicked into high gear, recognizing that this was going to be a huge movement moment where we really, really, really need to show the strength and diversity of the resistance to Trump and everything that he is bringing with him and represents. From January 19th to 21st, hundreds of thousands of people traveled to D.C. from all over the U.S. to show their opposition to Trump and to the rise of far-right and fascist groups. Despite violent threats from Trump supporters, Organizers and participants in the protests were not deterred. We literally get death threats on a on a minute by minute basis. But if we stop protesting because the right is scary, then we've lost already. Major disruptions began the night before the inauguration, when hundreds of demonstrators descended onto the Deplorable, an event organized by alt right Trump supporters at the National Press Club. On the day of the inauguration, a diversity of groups coordinated large-scale blockades of the security checkpoints. Themes highlighted by the blockaders included racial justice, climate justice, and queer resistance. We really believe that it's going to take a diversity of tactics and it's going to take a really strong showing of resistance to uh, counter what Trump is bringing with him. And direct action is a really, really important part of this. We have blockades going on at all of the security checkpoints, focusing on different issue areas and different communities that are going to be under threat in a Trump presidency. While some blockaded the entrances to the inauguration site, others took to the streets for an anti-capitalist, anti-fascist march. At 10 in the morning on Friday, a anti-capitalist and anti-fascist contingent gathered at Logan Circle and marched into downtown Washington, D.C., immediately encountering pressure and attacks from the police, and people in that contingent responded in kind, setting the tone for a day of, of open conflict between security forces, supporters of Donald Trump, and the rest of the people in Washington, D.C. Throughout the day, they targeted symbols of the far right, banks, corporate chains, and limousines. They built fires and barricades and defended themselves against attacks from law enforcement and Trump supporters. This is not a conspiracy of, you know, of some organized group. These were people who were responding to an open public call for people to gather. Everyone who is angry about the Trump presidency, everyone who doesn't want their lives to be governed by exploitative capitalism or oppressive government. Uh, and so these are people, they don't all know each other, they're just people who came together uh, wearing black clothes to express their uh, opposition to the prevailing order. It's, it's necessary to demonstrate that there will be consequences. That as, the, as the authorities take more and more of our freedom away, as the assault on the lives of working and poor people and people of color become more and more aggressive, that there will be consequences for this. And people have to stand up for themselves. People have to, have to say that this is too much. Police used pepper spray, stun grenades, and rubber bullets against the crowd. Clashes continued into the night. Over 200 people were arrested, most of whom were charged with felonies that carry a sentence of up to 10 years in prison. On January 21st, hundreds of thousands joined a historic women's march in Washington, D.C., as part of a global day of protest. Some estimates put total participation at 4.8 million, with demonstrations in over 700 cities worldwide. 
These days of action marked a clear rejection of the Trump administration and the global rise of right-wing populism. If we didn't know how broken the system was, this election very, very clearly shows exactly how messed up our system is. It's not something worth saving or salvaging or making nicer. We need to get rid of the system altogether and replace it with something new.